Right, folks. Um, so today we have another problem here uh, based on the ellipse. And it's often another problem that comes up in the higher level section of an elliptical question. So uh, the problem we're actually presented with here today is we are given the major axis, we are given the length of the major axis, and we're given two focal points, F1 and F2. And what we have to do is we have to construct the ellipse, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a little bit of, no of the knowledge that we've previously learned uh, in order to find the minor axis and be able to construct the ellipse using the concentric circles method. So first of all, we're given the major axis which is running from left to right. We know the minor axis is always going to be perpendicular to the major axis through the middle of the major axis. So what we have to do is we have to find the middle of the major axis there. So bisect our line. So I bisect my line of the major axis. Having bisected my line, I can now get the direction of the minor axis, which is going perpendicular to the major axis in the middle. So my minor axis is there. The thing is, we do know the exact length of our major axis. We do not know the direction, or sorry, the exact length of our minor axis just yet. But what we do have is the two focal points. So what we can actually use is originally when we had the major axis and minor axis. We learned the method to find the focal points was half the major axis by the minor gives us a focal point. So we're going to use that exact same principle, only this time we're going to take half the major axis and put it on our focal point to find the minor. Just that exact principle of half the major by the minor gives us the focal. We use that principle to work backwards. So I'll take half my major axis from here to here, and then I'll go to either of my focal points, F1 or F2. In this case, I'll just go to F2. And where that cuts there and there, I only had to do it on one side because that distance there will be the same. The distance from there to there is my radius from my minor axis. So there is another two points straight away that I have on my minor axis. And I'll actually just write that in. And now I will put in my minor circle and major circle actually. And now, using the concentric circles method, I am going to complete the ellipse. So, just going to speed up the video there. So there we go, um, that is the method for completing an ellipse when you were just given a major axis and the two focal points on the major axis. We applied the principle of finding the focal points from when given the major and minor. Half the major uh, from the minor gives us a focal point, therefore it works backwards where half the major from the focal point will give us the minor axis. I uh, hope you found that helpful. Uh, in the next question, what I'm actually going to be completing is completing an ellipse given just the focal points and a point on the curve. Okay. Right, folks. Uh, the next problem we're actually faced with is where we are given um, two focal points, F1 and F2, and P, which is a point on the elliptical curve. And what we're asked to do is construct the curve uh, given basically the focal points and the point P which is on the curve. We do not have the major axis, we do not have the minor axis, but we do know that there is two focal points and the focal points are always on the major axis, okay? So we do have the direction of the major axis, we just don't have the full length of it yet. Um, what we can do so is we can put in information that we do know. Uh, we do know that the major axis is going to extend out beyond the focal point here and beyond the focal point here. And we also know that the minor axis is going to be in the middle of the two focal points as well, perpendicular to the major axis. So I'll just get that stuff set up there. So I'll bisect that line there. 
and perpendicular to the major axis will be my minor axis and once again I just do not know the exact length of my minor axis so I cannot put in my major or minor auxiliary circles but what we are going to do is using a little principle here to help us construct the major axis so the principle is um, from P to F1 plus P to F2 is equal to the major axis so what I do is I join P to F1 and I'm going to join P to F2 as well and just write it in up here so PF1 plus PF2 is equal to the major axis okay so if we add up the length from PF1 plus the length to PF2 that is equal to the major axis PF1 from P to F1 plus the distance from P to F2 is equal to the major axis so very simple what I can do there is do it two ways but this is probably the easiest way um, I'm going to extend out that line just a little bit there and what I'll do is I will put my compass point on P and I will put the pencil point of the compass on F1 and literally just rotate it around okay and what that has done now is that PF1 has rotated around to here and what that has shown is the distance from there to there PF1 which is the same distance here plus PF2 is equal to my major axis therefore my major axis is this long from here to here so what I can actually do there is I can now bisect that line okay to find the radius of my major axis so I bisect that line above and below the line in this case because my line is not parallel to my t-square or perpendicular to my t-square parallel to my t-square sorry so bisect that line and the distance there is half of my major axis so I'll take that distance there on my compass and what I can do is I've already known where my center is so now I can draw in my major auxiliary circle And if I have my major auxiliary circle, I therefore have two points on the major auxiliary circle, one there and one there. Now I want to find the minor circle. So like the previous question, we have a focal point. So what we can actually do is we could actually do it numerous ways here. So I have the focal point. I could take half my major axis, half my major axis from there to there. And I could pop it onto the focal point, F1 in this case. Make a mark up here or down here they'll be the same distance and that will be my radius for my minor circle or my minor axis draw in the minor circle and there we go we have the major circle we have the minor circle we have a point in the curve and given two focal points and that's how we would construct them Another way we could have found the minor circle was, given the major axis, we could have projected up from the point perpendicular to the major axis or parallel to the minor axis, where I went up perpendicular. I'll actually just do it there. Just going back over a previous method that we went over. Where it cuts the major circle, project it back through the minor circle and parallel to the major axis from the point and we can see we found another point right there and that would have been another radius but there was numerous ways we could have done there okay so what I would actually do here now is I'm going to split my circle up 36 degrees completely using concentric circles meant. so I'm going to speed up the video there now
Right, and uh, there we go. That is the question completed there on that principle where we are just given the focal points F1 and F2 and a point on the curve. And the principle is PF1 plus PF2 is equal to the major axis. So the distance from P to F1 plus the distance from P to F2 added together equals the major axis. So what we often do there is from F2 to P, we extend it out. And F1, P is the anchor point. We're going to rotate it around and we will get the distance here back to F2, that would be my major axis, bisect that and you get the radius of your major axis. Then you can draw in your major auxiliary circle and whatever other methods you want to do to find a minor auxiliary circle. Concentric circle methods then uh, to complete the question. So uh, that's that question completed there guys, I hope you found the two of them useful on that video.